Yeah, so the Actuaries Code um, has been obviously has evolved, I guess, so over the years. And I think the most recent Actuaries Code was published a few years ago, so about two or three years ago. And actually, I was a council member uh, until earlier last year or last year. So I was probably involved in the latest version of the Actuaries Code. The Actuaries Code to me, I mean, it's a fairly high level set of principles um, around, you know, integrity and diligence and so forth, but also communicate as well. I think it's really important that actuaries, obviously what we deal with is fairly technical, but I think it's really important that we're able to converse and explain why we've come to certain views and judgments to others that aren't, you know, the same technical background. And I guess fundamentally what the actuaries code does, John, is it provides a sort of backbone and framework for really all the things that we do in our job. And you, and you can take it wider than the job as well. So I think it's a powerful, powerful set of prin principles. Well, absolutely, they do. And so I work for a big uh, multi-service firm. So, you know, we actuaries are, you know, a very important, but actually a very small part of the overall makeup of my firm. But I can definitely speak on behalf of the firm when I think that we are seen in very high regard, really, for some of those things I said earlier around our, obviously, our capability and our sort of um, expertise. But I think our integrity is one of those words that does come through the same time and time again. And obviously, certainly from a client point of view, it does. I think other stakeholders, such as regulators, also have a lot of time for actuaries. And so as a profession, we often um, talk to various regulatory bodies and other, other government bodies around, around new um, regs and evolving matters, because I think they want to hear our voice. And I guess finally, and probably most importantly, our customers. So obviously, most actuaries, many actuaries work for insurance companies. And I think customers... Um, you know, like knowing that there is an actuary somewhere doing the right thing for them in terms of their policy. The standards themselves really uh, apply to, to everyone that needs to follow them. And they're fairly sort of detailed, actually. So they're, you know, for fairly bespoke activities that because actuaries actually get involved in a huge range of different areas and different topics. And really those, um, you know, standards can be incredibly helpful to guide you through. So in my past example, I have been a reviewing actuary of uh, firms in terms of some of my audit roles. I've also been a chief actuary and I've also been a CRO. And I've always found these uh, standards as, as something to sort of go to as a base to sort of guide me. For me, though, actually, what's probably even more important than standard is, is the network that we have and other actuaries that I work with and being able to go and talk to them and consult with them and get their views. So those aren't things written down. But I think you know, going back to that point around support and integrity, the profession offers that in bounds. So you can, you know, you can easily find someone that will give you advice and, and help if you ask for it. I think it benefits everyone. I think it benefits actuaries very much because it's a bit like any regulation. People think regulation is a bad thing. It slows things down. But actually, and we're seeing it in the real world right now with a very big event that's obviously all going on, that actually good regulation is actually the key to um, success and support and sustainability. So really, I think because we do have, you know, strong, a strong regulatory environment that we work in, that actually attracts, you know, our clients, it attracts talent and it attracts individuals and customers to sort of you know trust in it so i think it's really important um so yeah i mean i think you know sometimes regulation can be overzealous and over engineered and then it's the right thing to do to call that out and push back but i certainly don't want to see it watered down no So, yes, I mean, luckily, I think those are fairly rare events, but they certainly do occur. And um, I think it's very important because obviously you're only as good as your practices. So it's all very well to say you've got a very strong regulatory environment and a very good culture around integrity and all those things we've talked about. But if you have individuals that don't uh, fulfill those and, and carry those through, then that just undermines it for everyone. So I think, you know, where we do um, have individuals falling foul, then we do need to take action. I think linked to that then is having the right culture for whistleblowing so that if someone does identify someone that's not doing the right things, then they should be confident that they would be supported if they call that out. And again, I mean, I'm sure these, these aren't perfect, but I think um, we're in a pretty good place on that. <laughs>